the context of science, the observer problem, was the reason that Heisenberg gave up the idea that science can discover reality. He gave it up. He's written a great book about you know, physics and philosophy. That's what he says. And he, he, he founded quantum mechanics, an absolutely fundamental bit of science. And he concluded that because of the problem of the observer. But it isn't like, well, the problem of the observer is the problem, because the word observer is just part of one way of dividing the world, the idea that there's a world and observer. Mm. That's one, one conceptual description. Um, and so it's not that the problem just comes up because of the observer. It's that any framework you have will have limitations. And it has limitations because closures are not the same thing as the stuff out there. I mean, I think the point is we're arguing sort of different things. Um, so what science is doing, as I said, is it's trying to find rules, rules that work at some level. It's not saying this is not... But, but the kind of um, problem that you're raising is more like, you know, if I said I was going to hey on why, and I said, well, where exactly does it end? Well, you, say, you might say, well, it ends here, it ends a little f closer, and you say, well, therefore, I can't say anything about hey on why. I mean, you know, the, the fact that I'm choosing to distinguish myself as an observer from the external reality is just a very practical description that allows me to formulate physical laws that work. And it also will tell me, okay, it's going to break down now, because at this point, um, you know, most times we don't have to worry about the uncertainty principle. Sometimes we do, and we know when that is. And at those times, we will factor that in when we're making predictions. So I think what you're pointing out, which sci a good scientist will do, is to be aware of the assumptions and approximations that are being made. But that is what science is. Well, it isn't what... Hawking thought when he thought that we yeah, could find Hawking, a theory of everything. Yeah, Hawking, so, like, so there are plenty of scientists who don't think that, and I agree. Well, that's like I said, I, I wrote agree, a book said, called Knocking on Heaven's Door. Science has moved towards but I wrote a book called Knocking on Heaven's Door because I think now, there were too many people who were being anti-science and were saying, yeah. how could science be right if it's going to change? Why is it a moving target? The fact is, when you're doing science, you don't, you know, we learn science as like, these are the laws, this is the way it works. But actually, as a scientist, most of the time, you don't know where you're going to end up, just like with yeah. many other fields. Yeah. You're not sure. That doesn't mean it's not science. It means it's not definitive. And the fact that you know, your scientific theory might change when you make more precise measurements doesn't mean your old scientific theory was necessarily wrong. It means it was an approximation that now you found out the limitations. Uh, no, that, that's not where Hawking is. He is not saying... I don't the, care the, what Hawking he, says. I care he's what I not, say. He's not saying that there are better approximations because you're still holding on to the idea of truth. We're getting closer and it's getting... Uh, he, well, there he, is he moves some to a model sense in which if you improve things... We can't you choose between... More, an ultimate sense in which we can't choose between. But d d don't misunderstand me. I am not in any way I'm critical saying, of science. We, as scientists... We never make absolute statements. We're all, at some level, we're, I mean, if, if we're honest, we're, I mean, you can disprove things in an absolute way. If something doesn't work, it's wrong. But to actually prove a theory, we can never prove a theory, because you can always say there might be some exception that comes up. And in philosophy, if you're trying to put yourself to an artificial scientific standard, you probably also won't make progress. But there might be questions that you can say, in the majority of times, this is the kind of conclusion we would come to. So I think if you want to use the scientific method, you should understand what it is better. Well, I, I think that the way that there are many ways in which the way that Lisa's describing science, I entirely w w would, would go along with. And we have a similar sort of account that it's a temporary way of holding the world currently, and we can try and improve on it later. So, so we, we, can, we can agree on that. Again, it's not necessarily temporary. Like Newton's laws, I would say, are still true, even though they're not fundamental. And that's, it's just a question of how we want to phrase it. So, I, so I, exactly. Maybe there's a terminology, but I, I suspect maybe there's a little bit more than the terminology because there are times when, although I, I agree with your, that, that notion that we, we put things forward and we, we try them out as it when we see whether it works, um, which is very much the way that I would describe how we improve our closures. Um, uh, I, I think there are times when uh, Lisa, you, you still are, are wanting to hold on to the idea that there is a particular thing that you might get to. While it seems to me any theory that you have, any account you have, is, is not going to be the same thing as, as the universe, if you like. It, it's, it, it's, it's a way of holding the universe. And so it's always infinitely different. And so it's, it, it's, we can try and get... Uh, frameworks that work better and better, for sure. And we should be trying to do that. And 
so I say, I, I'm, I'm wanting you anyway to be more rigorous about how you might go about doing that and providing a way of what does it mean to, uh, to, to refine your, your framework to get it to work. But I think we have to be wary of the notion that we uh, are uncover, uh, uncovering the universe, we're somehow seeing into the mind of God, uh, and, we, and, we've, and we've captured it once and for all. I'm not sure, we're just, could I just respond, since everyone's putting words into my mouth? Um, I mean, I think there is a description of science where we say we want to find the ultimate theory of everything. People certainly say those words. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.